Hi, I'm Dr. Caroline Leaf, and welcome to my podcast. Today, we're going to talk about helping our children deal with anxiety and depression. I'm a mom of four, and I know how hard it is sometimes to meet all our children's needs, but there are things that you can do that really help us to be able to help our children deal with anxiety and depression. Because this is the reality, our children do deal with these things. Life is difficult. Between the ages of 12 and 18 is considered to be the most difficult time in a child's, in, in the entire human lifespan. They're going through so many changes. They're dealing with hormonal changes. They're very aware of their self-image. They're very aware of themselves. They're very aware of what other people are thinking about them. They also don't have all their brain structures fully developed at that stage. So there is a, the ability of the brain to temper and to dampen some of the responses doesn't exist. So and if our mind is not quite in control and our brain is still busy developing, which is what it is up until the age of 18, this can make certain experiences that a child goes through huge. Like what for an adult may seem like something little, for a child is something huge. And that is, those are the kinds of things that are so helpful to know when you're a parent. So I have five tips that I have used with my, five, my four children, and I've also trained this with so many parents over the years in my clinical practice. They've used these tips to help them, to help their children. So the first tip is it's so important to tune in daily to your children so that you're aware of what they're going through. This can be a challenge in today's busy lifestyle where we're constantly running from one thing to the next and technology and all the things that we know about. But you can make a deliberate decision to when you wake up in the morning to tune into your children. I've had my eldest child is 27. So this means I've had children for tw- around me for 27 years. And I have made this a daily routine. It's a ritual. It's something I do every single day. I always pray a little prayer every morning when I wake up. God, please help me to tune in to the physical and emotional needs of my children. And then I mention them by name. And if I know something's going on in their life, I really try to focus on that and to be aware of it. So I'm very deliberate and very intentional about tuning in. And then during the course of the day, whether it's via a phone call or via text, I really do try and connect with them daily. When I say connect with them daily, my children are all grown up now. They're at university. They live in California. We, we are based mainly in Dallas and move between here and California and travels. So I'm not with my children 24-7, but I am with my children 24-7. I've made it a deliberate and intentional conscious decision to contact them, to ask them how they're feeling, to just to be aware of them, to be, when you tune in, according to quantum physics, you can actually, it's almost as though you're there with them. It's as though there's no space-time dimension. So I'm very intentional about thinking about their needs for that day. And really, if I, if I sense them or I sense something that's not quite right, um, maybe through a text or just a feeling that I have, I grab that and I run with it and I tune into them. The second tip is that create a safe space to talk about anything in your home. If your children can't talk to you about everything, I guarantee they're going to talk to someone about those things that they're thinking about and that they're being exposed to and that they're being challenged by. And there's a multitude of challenges. I don't have to tell you that. You need, you may not have all the answers. And you know what? They don't expect you to have all the answers. What a recent survey showed is that teenagers are desperate for their parents to listen to them. They feel like they're not being heard and they don't always feel like it's safe to tell their parents everything because there's so many laws about what we should do and what we shouldn't do. If we can't let our children tell us about the scary things as well as the wonderful things or their thoughts that maybe may shock you or the things that they want to discuss that may horrify you, if you're not going to listen, who is? If you're not going to give them perspective from a loving parent's point of view, well, who is going to give them a perspective? Mac and I made that decision right early on that we would never block our children from telling us certain things, telling us everything. We've tried to be as open as we possibly can. There's been times where I've had to, where I've had to really keep a straight face and really listen and not judge or not do anything and not show any kind of reaction. And there's times when I have showed a reaction. And when I have showed a reaction, my children have said, but mom, don't judge me. So it's very important that you immediately say, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to. Please carry on. The third tip is that don't let your children suppress emotions. Very important you encourage them to express themselves. They don't always have the words to describe how they're feeling. So they may, they may be behaving in a certain way that you know that something's off. And you may have to ask a whole lot of questions to help them to be able to verbalize. 
But don't let them suppress their feelings because if they suppress their feelings, they are going to go inwards and damage the brain and the body. Very important that you make it a safe place to express their feelings. Point number four, model how you manage anxiety. They will do what you do more than what you actually say. So every day there's going to be something that will throw you off. You and I both know that that's true. Most days there's something that will throw us off and can make us quite anxious. And we need to model how we're going to handle it and that will be a good model for them. So for example, when I'm anxious, I apply all the principles that I teach. I, will, I don't deny it. I say, okay, I'm, I'm anxious about this. I, I, I acknowledge it. And then I say, but I'm going to do this. I'm going to make it work for me and not against me. I'm not going to let my body work against me. I'm going to get a solution. I'm going to see it as not as a failure, but as information gained. I have lots and lots and lots of information on how to manage anxiety and model this correct information in my books, especially in my new book called Think, Learn, Succeed, where I talk about mindsets and our customized thinking and how to build memory. There's incredible techniques in there that will help you to model the correct way of behaving in front of your children. Point number five, never belittle their anxieties. What's small for you may be a mountain for them. I can't stress this enough. Things that really seem like tiny things to you may be huge to them. Never be tempted to say, in, in a minute you're trying to help them. I know very often we try and help our children and we say things like, oh, that's not so bad. It's kind of one of the worst things we can say to our kids because it kind of just shoots the emotions that they're experiencing in that moment right out the door. It's, it's sort of brushing off something that's huge for them. But by you listening and really tuning in, rather we should be saying things like, tell me what you're feeling. How do you feel this way? I hear you. I, I, I can see this is upsetting you. Really get to their level. Try to put yourself in their shoes. And don't see it from your adult experience perspective. See it from their perspective. They haven't gone through what we've gone through. As you tune into them, you'll hear them. They'll talk to you. And your connection and your communication will improve dramatically. We're here to help our children. We're here to model the way. We're here to show them life is tough and, it, and how to deal with it. And we need to be honest as well. We mustn't pretend as adults that things are all going to be fine and go away. We need to be brave enough to show our own anxieties and how we manage them. Our own things that make us depressed and how to manage them. In that way, we help our children. Another tool that I would strongly recommend that kind of helps you do all these five tips is my 21-day brain detox that you can get as an online version at 21daybraindetox.com and in my book, Switch on Your Brain. This is great for you to use and you can work through this with your children. You can sit together, read each of the steps, explain it how you would use it for yourself and then help them work out how they would work, how, what they would do. So you adapt it down to their level and you do it jointly together. If you're, doing, if you're doing it alongside your child, then they feel like you're doing it with them and it's not just them that's got the issue, but they see, hey, even my mom's got issues or even my dad has issues and you're working through it together. So you just adapt it down and work through the process together. Thank you for joining me today. I'm Dr. Caroline Leaf. 